Everything is socialism to the right wing. Want to not die in a pandemic? Socialism. Want clean air? Socialism. Want the working class to seize the means of production and democratize the economy? Okay, that is socialism and it sounds pretty good. The accusation of socialism is part of the playbook the GOP is now running against Joe Biden and his climate plan. Except, we've been here before. I'm Francesca Fiorentini and we're looking at how the right has historically red-baited any social programs that threaten to help people. Programs that eventually become incredibly popular and ones Republicans have no alternative to. They whine while so-called socialism works. Joe Biden's climate plan is not the Green New Deal, but it is incredibly ambitious, which thank God, because here in California, the wildfires are making everything smell like barbecue, threatening both our lives and our commitment to vegetarianism. Mama want a brisket. After a joint task force with Bernie Sanders supporters like AOC and members of the Sunrise Movement, Biden's climate plan is now a $2 trillion commitment that includes eliminating carbon pollution from power plants by 2035, revolutionizing the railroad and municipal transit systems, building solar and wind farms, and by 2030 getting to net zero greenhouse gas emissions for new buildings. Now, I tried to find the part of his plan Trump was talking about where Biden would tear down buildings and rebuild them with tiny little windows. It's not there, Don. Biden won't give you prison windows. The state of New York will. And that climate plan has triggered the right's most predictable defense mechanism to any whiff of progress. He signed on to Bernie Sanders' crazy 110-page communist manifesto. The Biden standards communist manifesto. No more oil, no more gas, no more coal. It's written writing right. the Bolshevik Bernie Biden manifesto. So remember, when Biden says, come on, man, we all know that the man stands for manifesto and the come on stands for communist. It's the communist manifesto. We're putting the pieces together, people. Look, despite also being born in the 19th century, Joe Biden is actually not Karl Marx. Though he collaborated with some supporters of a Green New Deal, Biden's plan leaves out the more transformative parts of it, such as a federal jobs guarantee. And yet, the attacks on Biden's climate plan are reminiscent of right-wing attacks on other bold social plans enacted by Democratic presidents. Plans that are so popular now, the right can't openly campaign against them. Like Social Security, aka old people allowance, that Americans pay into during their working years and have access to once they turn 62. Democratic President Franklin Delano Roosevelt passed Social Security in 1935 as part of the New Deal reforms. The New Deal not only established a robust social safety net, it also gave jobs to millions of unemployed Americans in building things like bridges, airports, and schools. And truth be told, the New Deal ended up saving the market's ass. In 1933, unemployment was around 22%. But by 1940, it was less than half that. Still, the promise of a new deal was fought tooth and nail by FDR's opponent in 1932, Republican President Herbert Hoover, who called the proposed programs, you guessed it, socialist, and warned of a march to Moscow. That red baiting didn't win Hoover re-election, and yet, Republican Alf Landon tried the same tactic when he ran against FDR four years later, as exemplified in this campaign ad where a Democratic donkey drinks a bottle of Russian vodka. Russia couldn't stand that stuff, but the jackass will try anything. <laughs> oh, well, who be the day and headache tomorrow? There goes the jackass running wild. The dynamite must have gone to his head and some to his feet. <laughs> I do not know what that donkey drank, but can we get some for Joe Biden? The problem is neither Hoover nor Landon had a better plan to help America out of the depression, even though they claimed to be committed to helping working people. Something FDR called smooth evasion as he mocked the right with the utmost shade. And let me warn the nation against the smooth evasion that says, of course we believe these things. We believe in social security. Cross our hearts and hope to die. But we do not like the way the present administration is doing them. Just turn them over to us. We will do all of them. The doing of them will not cost anybody anything. 
Okay, Franklin's got some zingers. Can we get some of that for Biden? Even though Landon called Social Security a fraud on the working man, it was incredibly popular and effective, like helping people live longer. By 2010, American men's life expectancy increased by 17 years. Social Security gave Americans their golden years. And then the right was apparently so bitter about it, it created an entire news network dedicated to filling those years with fear. 80 years later and more than 65 million Americans now benefit from Social Security. It's exceptionally important to retirees, 57% of whom say it's a major source of their income. Yet Republicans continue to try and cut it, despite the fact that 74% of Americans say Social Security benefits shouldn't be reduced. When Trump floated a budget last year that proposed cutting Social Security by $26 billion, his economic advisor called it political suicide. Which if you're this president, Sounds like a dare. Cause let's be real, the guy's been trying all kinds of political suicide since he assumed office, and nothing seems to be working. He's just living a presidential groundhog day. No matter how creative the suicide, he simply won't die. Politically. Take another wildly popular FDR-led policy, the GI Bill. The GI Bill guaranteed veterans unemployment benefits, low interest home and business loans, and federal aid for education. At the time, the GI Bill was opposed by some Republican lawmakers, in part because giving vets a college education was seen as sending them to institutions with crackpot long-haired professors and radicals. Yeah, you wouldn't want soldiers who just defeated Hitler and fascism to go to college and become Antifa. Republicans also opposed the GI Bill because they claimed it would help lazy veterans and spoil them, which, if you're just catching up on America, is racist code for black people. But decades after its implementation, the GI Bill has been consistently supported by politicians on both sides of the aisle, including Republican presidents. Earlier this year, I was pleased to sign a piece of legislation, a GI Bill for the 21st century. That's right. We're finally sending drones to college. It's just joshing. But fun fact, before signing that GI Bill, W threatened to veto extra unemployment benefits. Of course, he made sure that our troops would never qualify for unemployment benefits by just inventing wars for them to fight in. I am a job creator. Which brings us to healthcare, a battle Republicans have fought and died in for generations. Politically. Like Medicare, healthcare for the elderly, and Medicaid, healthcare for the poor and disabled. Both were started under Democratic President Lyndon B. Johnson's Great Society, which built on FDR's New Deal aimed at tackling racial and economic injustice. And that meant they were attacked by the right. Presidential candidate Bob Dole bragged that he voted against Medicare. George H.W. Bush called it socialized medicine. Even an actor in California who wasn't yet in politics gave a radio address claiming government-subsidized health care would take away a doctor's freedom. From here it's a short step to all the rest of socialism. I know how I'd feel if you, my fellow citizens, decided that to be an actor, I had to become a government employee and work in a national theater. Honestly? Hindsight 2020? The American people would have done a lot better if the government had subsidized the man-chimp bromance genre well into the 80s. So Reagan would have remained an employable actor and therefore would have never run for office, reformed welfare, began mass incarceration, or given us crippling economic austerity. I mean, let's be real. Fast forward to today. Despite their expense, Medicare and Medicaid are incredibly popular, with a majority of Americans supporting both. And while Republicans have tried over the years to kneecap the programs through budget cuts and a variety of other methods, it's become too toxic to openly campaign on cutting either. Which is why, even though he wants a budget that cuts over a trillion dollars from Medicare and Medicaid, Trump also makes contradictory promises like this. We will protect Medicare and Social Security and that is a pledge from the entire Republican Party. I really wish they had panned over to whoever Trump was pointing at, because I'm pretty sure it was Mitch McConnell going, mm -hmm. oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Then came the creme de la Kremlin, the belle of the Bolsheviks, the cream of the Trotsky, the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, another program that Republicans regularly called socialized medicine, when in fact it gives a big boost to private insurance companies. And it's a plan that despite wanting to overturn, they still have no alternative for. Just listen to then Indiana Representative Mike Pence in 2009, decrying the ACA based on how expensive Medicare is. Medicare, when it was launched in 1965, 
uh, was projected, I think, to cost $9 billion a year by 1990. It ended up costing seven times that. We're increasing the burden on our grandchildren enormously if we create a government-run plan. No debate on that, although I don't know that you want to go back to Indiana and campaign against Medicare. Oh, no, I, no, I support Medicare. Oh, no, I support Medicare because, well, I have to. Wow, Pence used to be pretty animated. I guess playing wingman to a racist autocrat has made him completely dead inside. Why else would a fly land on him for two minutes? The ACA may be flawed, but it's still supported by 55% of Americans, even in red states. When Republican lawmakers supported Trump and his threats to repeal it in 2017, constituents there let their representatives know how they felt. These coal jobs are not coming back, and now these people don't have the insurance they need because they're poor. and prove it. Oh, but sir, that's not what Republicans do. Republicans aren't here to improve these programs. They're here to prove that the government is bad by being bad at governing and then turning around and saying, see, we were right the whole time. How about another tax break for your employer? All while claiming, of course we believe these things. Just turn them over to us. Man, what I wouldn't give for a Democratic leader in 2020 who's that salty. And that brings us back to Joe Biden and his climate plan. Joe Biden is pushing a platform that would demolish the U.S. economy. Biden's gone radical left. God, I wish. Look, if Republicans think confronting climate change will demolish the American economy, what will not confronting it do to the economy? What has it already done? The truth is, just like healthcare or retirement or taking care of veterans, they have no alternative plan to stopping climate change other than drill it all or China invented it or sun flares or have we tried shooting bullets at the carbon? Now, of course, Democrats aren't saints or saviors. These social programs we've grown to love wouldn't have happened had the American people not demanded them and been the true drivers of change. Also, reality. Reality helps a lot. So remember, when a Republican calls something socialist, it's not just a tactic to scare you. It means that that something might actually just save your life. Thanks so much for watching News Rogue, and let us know, has your life been impacted by these socialist programs? which are kind of tight. Let us know in the comments below. And also, if you want to hear more from me, I have a podcast called The Bituation Room. You should check it out. See you next week.